as always. Hello to my Facebook audience. Prophet David Taylor here. Wait for my, there we go. Hello to my Periscope audience. God bless both of you. I'm glad to be here with you again. As always, I come on on 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, every Sunday to bring you the live prophetic word. Uh, this time I want to start the broadcast off with a word of prayer, so let's go into prayer. Thank you, God, for this day. Thanking you for keeping us safe. Thank you, oh God, with so much going on in the country for giving us another day, another hour, another moment of life. Every breath we draw comes from you. So I ask you right now to be in the midst of this prophetic time, oh God, and speak through your servant and allow what you've given me uh, for the body of Christ to come through and that those that hear it might receive it and know that that's you talking. And it might work to the edification of their souls and the prosperity of their lives. And we thank you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. All right, so it's a beautiful day outside. Uh, well, I guess depending on where you live, it's a beautiful day outside where I live. So <laughs> anyway, so as always, you know, we prayed that time, but I always pray. You know, today I did it on camera, but uh, some most of the time I do it off camera. And we ask the Lord, what is the word you want released uh, to the body of Christ. And so the word that the Lord gave me today was the word reward. The word reward. Okay? And our scripture reference, our scripture basis is Hebrews 11 and 6. A very familiar scripture, uh, but I'm going to read it. Hebrews 11 and 6, I'm going to read it out of the King James ver Version. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Most of the time when you hear that verse, people are focused on the faith. But what I have learned when, if you want to exegete the word of God with integrity, what I've learned is that Matthew 4.4, 4, you have to read every word that comes out of the mouth of God. You have to read every word in the verse because every word there is important. So when it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Most people stop right there. But for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and stop. <laughs> so it takes faith to please God. You can't please God without faith. If you come to God, you must believe that he is and and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That is why so many people, when they're articulating their faith, there's so many people say they don't want to deal with God or they don't want Jesus or I don't need that in my life. I don't need any religion. And Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. But I don't need that. I don't want that, you know, in my life. I'm just fine the way I am. Because you didn't read the verse that says that you not only have to believe who God is, but, and you have to believe he's a rewarder. He's a rewarder of who? Them that diligently seek him. That's super important. That's why I started my Thursday night broadcast dealing with genie concept. Because for those people that do believe God is a rewarder, they think that verse said that he's a rewarder of those that occasionally talk to him. Or rarely talk to him. Or only talk to him when they need something. And that's not what it said. He said he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. What does it mean to diligently seek God? Diligence means you do it on a regular basis and you do it with an eye towards detail. So that's why we have that phrase due diligence. When you say I'm doing my due diligence, it means that I'm doing, I'm getting all my ducks in a row. And getting all my ducks in a row means meticulous work. It means meticulous records. It means making sure that every I is dotted, every T is crossed. And it means doing it on the regular. That's what it means to be diligent. The opposite of diligent is lazy or slothful or sloppy. Okay? So lazy or sloppy or slothful is the opposite of diligent. So the Bible says he's a rewarder of them that diligently, that seek him on a regular basis and seek him with an eye towards detail. Okay? You're, you're meticulous. You're coming before God. You want to hear everything he has to say. You want to, you want to tell him everything that's going on in your life. And you do that every day. You're not a CME. 
Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. You don't do it three times a year. So those aren't the people that God rewards, and that's why a lot of people are mad at God right now. They're mad at God because of genie concepts. So that's why I want you to join me on the second Thursday night where I break down genie concept because genie concept has messed up a lot of people. Because a lot of people really believe that they can have no relationship with God during the week and no relationship with God at any point in their lives and then run into his presence and then demand that he do what they want him to do. And if he doesn't respond that way, then they get mad at God, they curse God, they leave the church. They say, if I can't have it my way, it's my way or the highway. And that's not what the Bible says. <laughs> the Bible says that if you want, if you want the reward of God, you have to diligently seek him. Now, why does it say that you have to seek him? Because that's another thing that confuses a lot of people. Because a lot of people say, well, you know, God is all powerful. God is all knowing. God's going to do what he wants to do. You know, it's all in God's hands, blah, 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 blah. But the Bible says you have to diligently seek him. You have to come before the Lord and talk to him, you have to seek his hand, seek his heart, seek his face, seek his will, seek his word, seek his voice. Why? I'll tell you why. There's two quick reasons. Reason number one is because God is love and God loves you and love doesn't force. If you got to force anything, it's not love. God opens his hand and gives humanity an invitation, but you have to seek it. You have to take advantage of that open hand while you have it. And if you don't, God's not going to force you. You ought to be able to look in the world around you and tell, hey, Gerald, you ought to be able to look in the world around you and tell that God does not force his will on people. Do you think life would look the way it does if God forced people to serve him? Do you think that life would look the way it does if God forced people to believe in him? That doesn't even make any sense. God does not force his will on us. I know a lot of people say that, but it's not true. God does not force his will. He does not force his love or his grace or his will on anybody. Because if he did, wouldn't the world look different? If God was out there making us do what he wanted us to do, it doesn't work that way. Okay? You have to seek him. You have to desire him. Right. Amen. It's a choice. You have to go after him. If God opens his hand and offers you an invitation, you have to respond to it. He's not going to make you, number one, because he's love. Number two, because God is a just judge. What do I mean by that? I mean that whenever God judges something, that judgment is just. It's right. It's fitting. It's righteous. And there's no way in the world God could rightly judge you if you didn't have a choice. If you had no choice, how could God ever possibly judge you for good or for bad? Because many times when we think about the judgment of God, we think about it negatively. What about a positive judgment? What if God says, I'm going to add 15 more years to your life? That's a positive judgment. There's no way God could judge you justly if you didn't have a choice. Okay? So anyway, that's why I want you to join me on Second Thursday Nights. Because I'm working very hard to dismantle genie concept. God's will is not automatic. It doesn't just happen. All the things that God has for you in this life, you won't just automatically get them. The reward of God comes when you diligently seek him. So let me give you some practical examples of what that means. That means you're in the word every day. That means you pray. You have a regular time of prayer every day. That means you go to the house of God at least once a week, hopefully on Sunday morning or whenever your main worship is. You have at least... One day where you go to the house of God and worship and you regularly pay your tithes, offerings, and alms. Tithes are 10% of whatever increase you get. So what that means that is a dollar, every dollar that you get, a dime out of every dollar off the top. You never give God what's left over. You never make God an afterthought. So every time you get anything, any paycheck of any kind in your hand, one dime out of every one of those dollars belongs to God off the top. That's your tithes. That's what you put in church. But on top of that, then there's an offering. An offering is whatever you want to give. So if you give God one dime for tithes, 
And then let's say you want to give God another dime for offering. That's 20%. That's 20 cents out of every dollar. Okay? But then there's a third thing you have to do, and that is alms. Alms is where you help uh, people that are poor. People that don't have food. People that don't have clothes. People that don't have shelter. People that are in prison. And people that are sick. You help them. You share your resources with them. Those are alms. Where somebody doesn't have a coat, so you get them a coat. Or somebody's hungry, they don't have a meal, so you get them a meal. Or somebody doesn't have shoes, you get them a pair of shoes. Or somebody doesn't have a place to stay, so you can find them a place to stay if there's a, you know, a healthy shelter or you know, whatever, if you want to work that out. But they're not outside dealing with the elements. Okay? And you, as a Christian, give up your resources to make sure that they are fed, clothed, and sheltered. Those are alms. So you do that on a regular basis, uh, tithes, offerings, and alms. Uh, so those are the kinds of things that are a part of your life. Another thing that is a, dil uh, a regular part of your life, if you diligently seek God, is you're always sharing your testimony. The people around you, they know you're a Christian because you're always talking about what the Lord has done for you. Now, you don't want to be obnoxious, and you don't want to be overbearing, and you don't want to not do your job. I have to hurry up and say that. Again, that's why I teach so hard on genie concept, because you know some Christians go to the extreme and they think that your witness is all about trying to convert everybody at your job and you ain't doing your work. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. But it does mean that you are ever ready to share your testimony about what the Lord has done for you. Because there's no way you can walk with God and not do that. Okay. So those are some examples of people that diligently seek God. And then my pastor, Apostle John Eckhart, has been talking about walking in the glory. That's another thing that's part of diligently seeking God. Uh, Psalm 84, 11, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. So we spend a lot of time talking about the grace, but we haven't spent that much time talking about the glory. God will give you glory. God will let you bathe in a river of his glory. God will bring his glory to your life. But that only comes when you diligently seek him. So you're in the house of God on a regular basis. You're in the word on a regular basis. You're in prayer on a regular basis. You fast on a regular basis. You, you pay tithes, offerings, and alms. Uh, on a regular basis. That's diligently seeking God. That's seeking his face. That's coming before him every day, asking him what his will is, studying his word, finding out. See, because when you study his word, you can find out the things that all of us Christians are supposed to do. And then when you seek him personally, you can find out the things that he particularly wants you to do. Because remember, I told you about the three levels of word, the Bible, the written word, Jesus Christ, the living word, and the prophetic word, the rhema word, the fresh breathed word of God. Amen. More glory will shine with you. You see that? So when you do that, then the Bible says he's going to reward people that do that. So that's why people that don't do that, but then think they're going to get rewarded from God, get disappointed. Then they start bad mouthing the church. Then they start blaspheming God. Then they start saying that Jesus isn't real. Then they start saying a whole bunch of things that aren't true. But the Bible says he, he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Okay? Now, I want to spend a little bit more time on that word reward. And then I have a prophetic word to release. And then if there's any prayer requests, put them on the screen. That word in the Greek is a long word. It's called uh, misapth misapthodotes. <laughs> Misapthodotes, that's Strong's exhaustive, exhaustive Concordance, number 3406. Misapthodotes, okay? Uh, that is the Greek word when it means a rewarder. But some of the, the cognate, uh, cognate words to it are reward, uh, properly someone paying what is due, a paymaster, giving rewards in keeping with his own values, Okay? emphasizing what the Lord personally values and hence the basis of determining rewards. So in other words, what God is trying to let us know is that you're not wasting your time when you seek God. And that's another reason a lot of people don't feel like they want to be bothered with it because they think there's no value in it, because they think there's no reward. That's not true. Because when you seek the Lord, there is great value because he will reward you and he rewards you on multiple levels. What do I mean by that? I mean the Lord will give you stress release. The Lord will 
Oh, uh, Periscope is freezing. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll keep talking. Facebook looks good. I'll keep talking with the Periscope. The Lord will give you, for example, stress release and stress relief. And what that means is that if you have something that's weighing down on your mind, so much so until you can't focus. When you come into the presence of God, he'll give you a sense of peace and release. He'll let you know that he's in control, that he'll be with you in the situation, that he's already worked it out. Okay? The Lord will give you physical healing. If there's something ailing you in your body, then the Lord will restore your body and your organs, making sure everything is working right. The Lord will give you financial increase. The Lord will give you opportunity. The Lord will give you favor. The Lord will open a door for your business and you'll have customers and clients that you never even knew were out there and God will bring them to you. So many things that the Lord will do because he'll reward you for diligently seeking. That's what he meant in Matthew 6.33, that if we seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, then all these things get added unto us. So in other words, we're not wasting our time when we see God. And that is something that Christians need to know, walk in, and own, and share. You need to understand that you are not wasting your time to seek the Lord because the devil will get in your ear and tell you that, and other people will tell you that too. Why you got to go to church every Sunday? Why we got to pray every day? You take that Bible with you everywhere. Why are you always witnessing? Why are you in the Word every day? Every day I see you reading the Bible. Why do you do that? Okay? We do that because we're seeking God. Because as you seek God and as you get to know Him, you will know His love for you. We love Him because He first loved us. And as you seek Him, you begin to experience His personal love for you. And once you experience that, you'll never want to be without it. You will never, ever, ever want to be without the love of God once you taste it, once you know what that is. Okay, more opportunities for me to teach his word. Okay, let me do that right now for Sandy. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now uh, on behalf of Sandy, oh God. She wants you to open up doors, Lord, for her to have more opportunities to teach your word. So please, oh God, open those doors because you are he that opens and no man shuts. And he that shuts and no man opens. Uh, fill her with the spirit of God. Uh, anoint her lips. Put your burning fire in her lips. So that when she speaks, it'll be with confidence and boldness. And the word of God will come out. It'll be lit on fire to touch the heart of everyone that hears it, O oh God. For the edification of their soul. The saving of the soul. And the building up of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. We believe it. Amen. Amen, amen. Sandy, thank you for that prayer request. And so... That's what you need to own and claim as a believer. That I'm not just doing it just to be doing it. I know you're welcome. I, I know God. I know his love. I know he loves me. And as I've gotten to know him and his love, I know that his plan is better than mine. It doesn't matter what I thought. It doesn't matter what I wanted to do. I have found out that his plan is better than mine. So the thing I want to do every day is be sure I'm before the Lord asking him for his guidance, his counsel, his commandments, his leading. Because I know that whatever I thought about my day is low. Whatever he thinks about my day is high and I want a high plan. And the only way I could ever possibly get to high plan is if I come before him and seek him and ask him because he's not going to force me. He ain't going to force his plan on me. He's not going to force his word on me. He's not going to force his love or his grace on me. I have to seek it. I have to ask him every day. And every day, I want a high plan. I want to walk in everything he wants me to walk in for that day because whatever that plan is, is better in mine. If I don't talk to him, if I don't seek him, if I don't obey him, if I don't seek his word, if I don't listen to his spirit, my day will be low. My plan will be much lower than his. See what I mean? And, and that's why God comes to us as children and tells us that even when we're young, to seek his face and get to know him so that we don't waste our lives. That's why so many people end up at a point in life and they've lived all these years. And then they come to know the Lord and then they realize, I should have been living for Christ a long time ago. You know why? Because his plan is better. But you got to seek it. He's not going to force it on you. Okay? And so he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So I have a prophetic word to release. But I want to encourage those of you that are looking at me right now to 
make a commitment or make a recommitment to daily getting into the Word. I want you to make a commitment or a recommitment into daily prayer. I want you to make a commitment or a recommitment to weekly, at least once a week, going to the house of God and getting involved in the worship. Go before the Lord and worship Him and thank Him. Okay? Sunday is the first day of the week. If nothing else, you ought to go before the Lord and thank Him for them six days He just gave you. He just gave you Monday through Saturday. So you need to go before Him on Sunday, the first day of the week, and thank Him for them six I just lived. Because if you made it to Sunday, He gave you them six. So if nothing else, go before Him and thank Him for them six days. Thank you, Jesus, for them six days you just gave me. Make a commitment or a recommitment to tithes, offerings, and alms. Where you take a dime out of every dollar God gives you off the top and then whatever else you want. It doesn't have to be another dime. It can be two cents. You can pay 12% and you can stair step your way up. It's up to you. But you take a dime off of every dollar off the top, then take whatever else off that for your offering. And then if there is someone that is in need of assistance, give them some food, buy them some clothes, or point them to someone that can, or donate some money or some time to a shelter or a prison ministry, or uh, a halfway house where they're, they're reintegrating prisoners back into society. But spend some time in your week giving to those that are hungry, that are thirsty, that don't have clothes, that don't have shelter, that are sick, that are in prison, because that is so important to the Lord. The Lord says, when you do it to them, it's like you're doing it to me. Jesus Christ takes that personally. Did you know that? When you give alms, the Lord takes that person. He said, he said, it's just like you're doing it to me. So I want you to make a commitment or a recommitment to living that way. And when you do that, when you're in the word every day, when you're in prayer every day, or when you fast at least once a week, where you turn your plate down and spend time with God in prayer, when you go to the house of God and worship, and when you do your tithes, offerings, and alms, you'd be surprised at what the Lord will begin to, will begin to pour in your life in terms of a reward. I mean, all kinds of things, opportunities, peace, wisdom, higher spiritual giftings, insight. And here's the big one, warnings of danger. Did you know that if there's danger coming in your life, did you know that the Holy Ghost can warn you? Did you know that? Did you know that the Holy Ghost can always see the devil coming? You can't see the devil coming, but the Holy Ghost can. Did you know that one of the rewards of the Lord is warning? Did you know that? Did you know that sometimes people have had their lives saved because God told them, don't get on that plane? Because the Lord told them, don't turn down that street today? Because the Lord told them, take a cab today or take an Uber and not the bus? Because the Lord told them, don't leave the house today. Don't even worry about it. I got it. Do you know that some people have had their lives saved because they listened to the Lord? Because one of the rewards of the Lord is warning. Because God can warn you about what the devil's doing because the Lord always knows what's going to happen before it happens. Did you know that? And did you know that some people, because they don't see God, they get caught out there and the enemy snatches their very life from them and they didn't even know it was coming. That's right. So that's why I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to believe what the word of God says. That when we, again, are in the word every day, in prayer every day, fast at least once a week, go to the house of God, um, pay our tithes, pay our offerings, pay our alms, and spend time in worship. When you make the point to go thank God for them six days you just gave me, thank you for my work, thank you for my sleep, thank you for my food, thank you for my family, thank you for my friends, thank you I got a bed to sleep in. Thank you that I'm still living in a country as of now where I can openly be a Christian and go to your house because that's not true in all countries. Okay? And you need to go to the house of God and come before the Lord and worship and thank him for them six days and all the blessings he just gave you. And when you do that on a regular basis, praise the Lord, when you do that on a regular basis, he will load your life with rewards and blessings. That is the difference between Christians. 
because a lot of Christians have taught for years erroneously that you get all the rewards of God just because you're a Christian. That is incorrect. You do not get all the rewards that God has for you in this life just because you got born again. You get the rewards God has for you in this life if you HBO, hear, believe, and obey. <laughs> if you want God to bless you, you want God to reward you, you got to hear what the Lord is saying, you got to believe what the Lord is saying, then you got to do what the Lord said do. Then you get the rewards. HBO, hear, believe, and obey. Cain in the Bible did not believe God. God told him to bring a sacrifice, so Abel brought a lamb and killed it, and God honored it. Cain didn't believe that, so he bought, uh, brought fruits and vegetables, and God did not honor it. Then Cain got mad. Then God told him, that's the wrong attitude to have. You need to get out of that attitude. Cain didn't listen and killed Abel. Now, let's think about that. Cain wouldn't kill a lamb to get right with God, but he killed his brother. Oh, okay? That's the difference between people. Okay? When the Lord is telling you to do something, HBO. Hear, believe, and obey. And if you don't, you're not going to get the reward. And then you're going to watch somebody that did hear the Lord and did believe God, and then they obeyed. They're going to get the reward. That's right, because that's how it works. You see that? Okay, now I've got a prophetic word I want to release, and then we'll close out with prayer. And uh, if you have any more prayer requests, uh, again, just put them on the screen. For behold, my people, the days come and now are where your faith shall begin to become sight, where the things that you have been believing me for, the things that you have fasted for, labored for in the spirit, struggled for, uh, held fast for, showed patience and perseverance, they shall begin to manifest in your life in every and varied areas. Don't be surprised, don't be afraid, and don't hesitate to go get your reward. Believe me all the way through, because when you get the reward in your hand, then you can give me more glory. Then you can point to the reward and say, just look and see what God has done for me. Don't look to the left or to the right. Don't get distracted. For in the days to come, there will be many distractions. There will be many tricks of the enemy, many life experiences to try to pull your vision away from me. Don't get distracted, but continue to listen to my voice and obey what I'm telling you. And as you do that, you begin to see multiple rewards manifest in your life. There will be people that are jealous. There will be people that are angry. There will be people that are antagonistic and hostile because they will be mad that you are blessed. Do not fear them because I'm with you and my glory is with you as a cloud by day and as a pillar of fire by night and I encompass you round about to protect you and to keep you in all your ways. So continue to seek me, continue to believe me for rewards and now you are in a season where those rewards shall begin to manifest and you shall know them when you see them and be certain and be sure to give me the glory says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Well, praise God for that prophetic word. Uh, I'm going to go back and watch that again uh, because I was receiving that while the Holy Ghost was giving it to me. And I'm super excited about whenever God says it's reward time and to go for it. And that's always some good news. So uh, God bless you so much. Thank you for all of those of you that have tuned in. Uh, I'm here every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then I started a new program on second Thursday nights. So that's only once a month on the second Thursday of every month. And I'm dealing with something called Genie Concept. So I'm helping to dismantle and tear down the wrong ideas we have about God and the things that have messed up our relationship with him and getting the right ideas in so we, we can begin to walk the way the Lord wants us to walk. Okay. God bless you so much, and all of those, all of my links are on my Facebook page and on my Twitter. So my Facebook page is Prophet David Taylor, and then my Twitter is PDTSOTC. If you want to look me up online, the fastest way to look me up is hashtag PDT, because I always hashtag everything I do. So hashtag PDT is the fastest way to find me online. All right? Thank you so much. 
Can I pray for you, uh, Victoria? Okay. What do you want prayer for? Uh, let me know what you want prayer for, Victoria. I'll be happy to pray for you. So, yeah, that's the fastest way to find me online. Hashtag PDT. Ability to speak about my past and for discernment. Okay. We'll do that right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I came, I come to you on behalf of Victoria, oh God. I ask that. I sense, oh God, there is there is deep feeling, oh God, there, there is brokenheartedness. But you said that the Spirit of the Lord was upon you and you came to heal the brokenhearted. So right now, oh God, for Victoria, we speak healing, healing for that brokenheartedness. We speak relief and release and healing for her heart and soul, oh God, that she will be damaged no more. And that also that she would get the spirit of discernment of God, that as she begins to navigate and move forward with you, that the spirit of God will begin to stir up within her the spirit of discernment so she can know who she's talking to, know what spirit people are operating in, know where safety is, know where danger is, know where blessing is, know where cursing is, and know where the will of God is so you can lead her. For you are indeed the good shepherd, O oh God. You lead us besides the green pastures and the still waters. You are the good shepherd that giveth his life for the sheep, and your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So I release into Victoria's life a spirit of discernment, and I release into her life a spirit of healing, O oh God, that she might get the healing that she needs and that she might be more in tune with the Holy Spirit and walk in a spirit of discernment. And we thank you for it. We stand against all backlash. In the name of Jesus, Satan, the Lord rebukes you. The blood is against you. We stand against all black backlash and retaliation from the enemy, and we cover it with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, Victoria. God bless you. Thank you for that prayer request. And, um, and we that's yes, right. We believe in God for the victory right now. Also, I want to say, you're welcome, Victoria. God bless you. Whenever you pray and ask God something, God answers you right now. However long it might take to manifest, it might unfold in time. But whenever you pray according to God's word in faith, the Lord answers you right now. Okay? So believe right now. Don't be thinking three days from now. Right now when you pray it, okay, if it's according to the word of God and you pray in faith, God answers you right now. You can feel stuff drop in your spirit. When you pray and ask God for something and when a prophet of God gives you a release, when they release the word of God, you can feel it. You can literally feel that breath of life drop in your spirit and now you're moving in that new thing so whenever god whenever you're praying to god about something and it's according to the word and it's according to his will and you pray in faith it happens so no more of this five days from now the lord's gonna answer me no he answered you as soon as you pray okay now it might take some time to manifest depending on what it is but he answers you right now okay all right Okay, I think that's it. So I'm going to pray a closing prayer. God bless you. Uh, thank you all so much. Uh, my Periscope audience and my Facebook Live audience, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, I, I say it all the time, but I count it as a privilege and a, 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 a pleasure to be able to be used of God because God does not need me for anything. So whenever God calls you to do something, it's an opportunity not to waste your life. And an opportunity to be used by God is the most blessed thing that there is. So I feel blessed to be able to be used by God to release the word of God into the body of Christ and to pray for you. All right. Uh, here's our closing prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you thanking you for your matchless word. Thanking you for your precious Holy Spirit. Thanking you, O oh God, that you have given us your word to live by. And in Matthew 4, 4, you said we can't live by bread alone. We have to have every word that comes out of your mouth. So we thank you, O oh God, that your word is the most precious thing that we have. And we thank you for it, O oh God. We can't thank you. If I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't thank you enough, O oh God. And I bless your name, O oh God. And I just thank you that you are merciful and gracious. And we live on a planet of seven and a half billion people. And you know each one of us by name. You got the details on our life. You got the 411 on us. Oh God, each one of us and only a mighty God can do that. That's too much information for me to even uh, have an imagination in my brain of what that is. And yet you love us individually. So I can't praise you enough. I thank you for your word. I thank you for an opportunity to serve you. I thank you for an opportunity to be in your will. And I thank you that your plan is better. 
every time, every time, every day, your plan is better. So I thank you for it. I thank you for the high call. And I thank you for all of those, oh God, that have been diligently seeking you and that are coming into a season where they're going to begin to see those blessings and those rewards manifest. And we give you the glory right now. We're going to give you some more glory when we get it in our hand, but we give you the glory by faith right now that even before we see it, we're saying thank you, Jesus, and hallelujah, and blessing your name because we know it's on the way. But even before we get it here, we're thanking you for it by faith because we know it's already done whenever it manifests. So we thank you for that. And today is Sunday, and I thank you, God, for them six days you just gave me. I thank you for the Monday through Saturday you just gave me on this, the first day of this week. And I thank you for it, and I give you all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you, saints. Uh, I so enjoy this time. And so I will be here same time next week, next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then on the second Thursday of every month at 7 p.m. First, I was doing it at 6. I think I'm going to move it later because someone told me I need to give people a chance to get home, you know, get dinner, whatever. So we'll move it later to 7 on the second Thursday, so you can uh, check out No More Genies, and we can walk in uh, miracles and healings. All right? God bless you. I'll see you. Have a good week, and don't forget to thank the Lord for all that he's done.